overcoming satanic limitations. So somebody will ask that, prophet of God, master prophet, what is a limitation? A limitation is a hindrance, barrier, or, or that thing that impedes maximization of potential. So a limitation, overcoming satanic limitation, overcoming satanic limitation. What is a limitation? A limitation is anything that restricts you, anything that, that denies you, anything that restricts you, anything that hinders you from maximizing your full potential, from maximizing your full potential, from maximizing your full potential. Don't forget that. Everybody has a potential. You were born naked, but you were not born empty. You were born naked, write down, down, write it down, pin it down. You were born naked, but you were not born empty. So nobody is useless. Even a dirty water can quench fire. Even a dirty water can quench fire. A dirty water can quench fire. Sometimes when there's fire, fire outbreak. When fire, fire, there's fire outbreak. Dirty water can be useful. Regardless of how dirty you are, you can still be useful. Regardless of how dirty you are, regardless of your background, regardless of the color of your, 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 your the color of your skin, regardless of your age, regardless of your, your orientation and background, you can still be useful in the hands of the porter. You can still be useful in the hands of God. So I came here, we are talking about dealing with satanic limitation. There must not be any limitation in your life. Matthew chapter, the Bible is speaking the other day. It says, seek you for the kingdom of God in Matthew. And after you have seek you the kingdom of God, it said that all other things shall follow you. In the kingdom I represent, I'm an ambassador of this kingdom. The kingdom, I'm a messenger and a leased man and a general overseer of a puppet that represent the kingdom, of an altar that represent the kingdom. In this kingdom, there are no limitations. In this kingdom, there are no restrictions. We have only few restrictions, and that is the restriction of we not committing sin, of we not committing iniquity and transgression. And even with that, grace is made available. And even with that, mercy is made available. And even with that, there is a babbling blood that is always interceding on our behalf. So overcoming satanic limitation, there must not be anything that you should allow to limit you. Dearest you, you got you must not be limited. Personally, you must not be limited. From within, you must not be limited. Around you, outside you, outwardly, you must not be limited because you are born and purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. I don't care the village you are watching me from. Maybe you are watching me from Navrongo, the deepest part of a village in Navrongo. Maybe you are watching me in Haiti. You are watching me in Havana. Maybe you are watching me in Mexico. You are watching me in Jamaica. Any part of the world you are watching me, you are a breed that cannot be limited. You are a breed that language cannot limit you. You are a breed that the color of a skin cannot limit you. You are a breed that financial disaster, financial instability, financial recession cannot limit you. You are a breed that whether you went to school, you didn't go to school, it cannot limit you. Education, yesterday I told the church on, online that education is good. I believe in education. I will wish above all things, as Apostle Paul told Timothy, that he should study to show himself approved unto God. He must study to show himself approved unto God. You got to say that, bless God for education. But whether you go, you were studied uh, informal or formal, education must not limit you. I am talking about overcoming satanic limitation. What you are not conscious of, the devil can take advantage of that and impede the will of God in your life, impede the permissive will of God in your life and impede, impede as it were. We have the permissive will of God and, and, and I'm here this morning uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus from New York to tell you somebody that child of God, man of God, that ministry cannot be impeded. There cannot be limitation to the extent at which that ministry can flow, to the extent at which your giftings can, can cut across the length and breadth of the nations of the world. So I've explained to you what limitations are. Limitation is anything that does not allow you to as it were maximize to be useful, to be productive, to be fruitful. And I'm here in the name of Jesus on the authority of scripture to come and tell you that you were wired by God. You are redeemed of God. You are redeemed uh, remnant of God that nothing can limit you. A witch cannot limit you. Rumors cannot limit you. Scandals cannot limit you. What the devil does and anything in the devil 
cannot limit you. You are blessed and you will sit above principalities. You are blessed, you will sit above diseases. You are blessed and you sit above all the negatives of the devil. I want you to understand that. You are above, you are above, you are above. The Bible says that he that is from above, he that is sent from above, is above all. You are from above. I don't care the name of your mother. I don't care the village you come from. Maybe you are like Elisha of Tesbite, that nobody knows Knows your mother, nobody knows your father. I don't, I thank God for that. I praise God for that. You are not the first person, you're not going to be the last person. But one thing I'm sure, or one thing I'm here to encourage you is that that must not limit you. What that must not limit you today. Maybe there's no money in your pocket. When you look into your purse, you look into your wallet, there is nothing in it. Listen, it has happened to all of us before. You're not going to be the first, you're not going to be the last. But that must not limit you. That must not limit you. The Bible says. Speaking in Jeremiah 4 verse 3, Jeremiah 4 verse 3, sorry, it said, For thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break your fallow ground and sow not among tongues. Listen to me. You break your fallow ground, sir. You break your fallow ground, sir. What is a fallow ground, sir? The fallow grounds are the impossibilities, sir. The impossibilities you you systems have made you accept, sir. or religions have made you accept sir. the books and the thinkings and the logic of men have made you accepted that. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3, it said, I the Lord, it through me, you break that says the Lord that to the men and of Judah, to the men of Jerusalem. What is Judah? What is Jerusalem? Judah and Jerusalem is the same. In the olden days, we have Israel was divided into two sections. The northern sector, their capital was, was Samaria. And the southern sector, at a point, their capital was called Judah. But later on, it was changed to Jerusalem. What is Judah? Judah means praise. Judah means praise. What is Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a place of peace. Jerusalem is a place of perfection. Jerusalem is a place of righteousness. Jerusalem is a place of perfection, completeness, absoluteness. And the Lord said, wherever you are, that is your portion. Wherever you are, that is where you are supposed to be. He said, tell the men of praise, tell the woman of praise, tell the woman of satisfaction, tell the woman who are at a point and a location of completeness, that I, the Lord, I will help them to break their ground, sir. I see somebody breaking her ground, sir. I see somebody, they say you can't travel. I see you breaking that ground, sir. I see somebody, they said, man of God, they said that nothing can come out of you. Nothing can come out of your well, sir. Nothing can come out of your ministry. I see you breaking the well, sir. Tell yourself, type, I am breaking the ground. Sir. I see prophetic whole church, the men and women connected online, the men and women assigned to our covenant uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I see you do in the name of Jesus breaking limitation. Uh, you are a limitation breaker. You are a limitation breaker. You are a protocol breaker. You are a line crosser. You are not just a spectator. You didn't come to, to, to spy on people. You didn't come to be one of the spectators. You came on earth released and bought and, and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. To become a player, I see you being a major player in your, in among your siblings. Sir. I see you become a major a major player among your friends. Sir. By the righteousness of the Lord Jesus, sir. by the audacity of Scripture, I see the church playing a major role in the affairs of the world. Sir. I see the church of God across the world playing a major role in politics, in commerce, in in, in every sector of the of, of the world. Sir. I see the church of God taking over. I see the prophetic breaking follow breaking follow ground. I see the church, the prophet in Ghana, breaking grounds, breaking grounds, breaking grounds, breaking grounds. I see you breaking grounds. The one the doctor said you can't conceive. I see you breaking that ground. I see you breaking that ground. And I'm seeing a twin come out of you. I see a triplet come out of you. For your sorrow, the Bible says, the Lord said, I shall double it for you. He said, for your delay, the Bible said, I shall speed it up for you. That says the Lord. For your shame, I shall restore you back to your glory for your shame in the book of lamentation uh, lamentation 3 verse 10 it says uh, it says, i've perceived and seen that there is no justice in the court of men i perceive and seen that there is no justice in the court of men but i the lord in my court there is justice I, I see justice prevailing on your behalf i see the lord justifying you i see the lord helping you to break limitation where your mother couldn't do where, where your mother couldn't achieve where your mother couldn't go 
I see the Lord helping you break that ground. What your elders couldn't do, I see the Lord helping you break that ground. You are limita- you are limitation breaker. Every limit in the bloodline, I see somebody breaking it. The limit in my paternal background, I see grace coming on me. I see grace coming on me. I see the force of grace backing me to break it in the name of Jesus. The men in my family, they don't do well. The women in my family, they don't do well. Their marriages don't last. Their children die young. Their children die while they are, they are, they are, they are sucking breasts. Their, their, their nursing mothers die. Their, their, their women in labor die. I am seeing my children. I am seeing my nurse of Canaan. I am seeing the men and women connected to my life breaking that ground. I see. I fall in my eyes. I I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my ears. I feel it all around me. That there are some of you online, you are breaking the lines. You are crossing the lines. You are breaking the protocol. The spirit of boldness is coming on you. The spirit of force, aggressiveness is coming on you. That spirit of bulldozer, that spirit that will make you a trailblazer, that spirit that will make you be a peace setter, that spirit that will let you rewrite the history, that will let you break the evil records, that will let you break and rewrite the history. I see that that spirit come on you. I see that spirit come on you. That Gideon spirit come on you. That Eunice and Louis spirit come on you. That Deborah spirit come on you. Receive the spirit of impartation. Receive the spirit of aggressiveness. Receive the spirit of boldness. Receive the spirit of holiness. Receive to break in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I'm a breaker. You are going to be, I said, you are a breaker in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that in Psalm 24 verse 7, every gate of limitation in my life, every Every listen to me, child of God. The Bible says, Oh God, listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to the word of the Lord. Second, first, second Timothy 1 verse 7. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Any of you, anybody online right now, who is in the fix? I see the Lord fixing it right now. I see the Lord fixing it right now. I see Jehovah God fixing it right now. Prophet Sophia, God bless you so much. I see Jesus fixing you. Don't be troubled because God is fixing you. Don't be troubled because God is fixing you. Don't be troubled because God is fixing you. The angel of God are on assignment. The angel of God are released right now. Ministerial angels are being released to wherever you are. And evil foundation that are holding all of you on, that your fellow ground cannot be broken. That limit is being broken in the name of Jesus. Listen to, to the word of the Lord. As that says, but so any essence seed of oppression limitation for my bloodline, that sabotage, I don't know in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord favor you this morning. The Lord be gracious unto you this morning. Hear me, child of the Lord. We are talking about overcoming satanic limitation. And I'm giving a three point. How do you become over? How do you become? How do you overcome satanic limitation? How do you become? How do you overcome satanic limitation? Number one, live a holy life. Number one, live a righteous life. The Bible says that sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. How do I overcome satanic limitation? Number one, live a holy life. Number one, live a holy life. For the spirit of Jesus is a spirit of righteousness. Live a holy life. Live a holy life. What is holiness? Holiness is a place that you stand, and your place is bequeathed and exchanged for the place of Jesus. So the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 9, it said that let anybody not glory, anybody that glory, let him glory that he knows the Lord. This morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending on wherever you find yourself, I am giving a special invitation that accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Love him, worship him, serve him, let him be the Lord. If somebody is your Lord, that means that person is your master. If somebody is your Lord, that means that you take your instructions. You don't do anything with that team. Listen to me, child of God. How do I overcome satanic limitation? Number one, accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Number one, live a righteous life. Who is? How do you become live a righteous life? When you accept him, you become righteous. Righteousness is not the act of doing good or bad. Righteousness is positional. Righteousness is positional. Righteousness is being conscious of Jesus. Righteousness is being conscious of Jesus in your life and trying to follow the teachings and the practices of Jesus humanly possible. When you do this, you overcome family patterns that eat the, the, the fabric of the family. When you do this, the Lord gives you exemption and you overcome satanic limitation. How do I become overcome satanic limitation? Be righteous. What is the righteousness? Accept Jesus Christ as a gift. Accept him in your heart. Accept him in your heart. 
as the Lord and your personal Savior. Have no other God except Jesus. Have no other master except Jesus. I have only one master since I was I became born again, since the age of 14. I accepted him. He's my righteousness. He's my everything. And I put on the garment of righteousness. I want you to accept him. I'm giving this privilege of invitation. This is the best invitation that you can ever have. That in, when you come on him, you put on the garment of righteousness and the holiness. And you do better. What kills the family will not kill you. The Bible says in Mark, the book of Mark, it said that tell my people who come to me, the people that accept me as their Lord and personal Savior. The book of Mark chapter 1, the Bible says, said, tell them, they shall tread upon scorpions and scorpions cannot harm them. They shall drink poisonous and toxic substance and they cannot kill them. For I, the Lord, I will be with them. I, the Lord, I will be with them. So put on and accept Christ, Christ Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, not as your colleague, not as your friend, but as your Lord and personal Savior, as your master, as your master. And when you do that, you overcome satanic limitation. The day I accepted Christ is one of the best days in my life. I always tell God, I always tell people, I always tell the body of Christ in the church of God, if I get an opportunity, like I've got an opportunity, that the best thing that has ever happened to me is accepting Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. He has done me good and I've enjoyed goodness out of him and I'm still enjoying it. So that is the first thing. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior for he is our righteousness. Number two, how do I overcome satanic limitation? Believe, 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 believe. Just becoming a born again child is not enough. Just becoming a born again child is not enough. Just becoming a born again child is not enough. Just becoming a born again child is not enough. A lot of people are Christian. A lot of people are born again, but they don't believe enough. They don't believe God enough. They don't believe God enough. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. You have to be a believer. You have to be a believer. Believe that what killed your mother will not kill you. Believe that what killed your siblings will not kill you. Believe that what destroyed their bloodline cannot destroy you. Being a believer, being a believer, you can be a religious person without not believing. I want you, number two, how do you overcome satanic limitation? You got to believe that you are the head and not the tail. Believe the word of God. At Mark 10 31, it said the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. Believe. That is why we are called believers. That is why we are called believers. That is why we are called believers. If you are listening to me, wherever you are watching me, if you don't believe, the Bible says in Chronicles, it said that believe the Lord thy God, believe the Lord thy God, believe the Lord thy God, believe God, believe God, believe God, that in your dark, God bless you, Nana JB, so you got to believe, I believe that that cancer will not kill you, you will become a victim of what you believe, you become the evidence of what you believe, I don't believe in poverty, I was listening to Bishop Oyadipo, he said, I can never be poor, and I asked myself, that how can a man take the place of God, and say that I can never be poor, then the Holy Spirit rebuked me, and the Holy Spirit said, don't you know that you are God, don't don't you know that the book of Esther say you are God? You are my incarnate. I created you in my image. Believe that you cannot be in Africa forever. If you want to be in Europe, if you want to break somebody from Europe, God is going to help you. When you believe, you become. When you believe that you'll be great, you'll be great. When you believe that you are little, you'll be little. You can, nobody can address you. Nobody can believe in you. If you don't believe in, a lot of you, you've lost focus. A lot of you are depressed. You are despair. You have lost confidence in yourself. This hour, I came as a prophet of God. My name is Nigel Gacy to come and tell you that. Believe that it's possible. Believe that it's achievable. Believe that it's attainable. Believe, child of God, you got to believe. If you don't believe it, you cannot overcome it. Believe that God is going to heal you. I've seen people in my ministry. I've seen people in my ministry. Psalm 27 verse 1, 7. It said, the Lord is my strength and my, life, and, and my soul. My heart trusts in him. God bless you. I have seen people in my ministry. I have seen people in my ministry being healed with cancer. I know the doctor said there is no cure for cancer. 
But on that Kwame Abraham Paul, we believe the impossible. And I believe that my hands have been lifted. If you believe you will be coming. If you believe that you have been divorced, but you marry again, it will come to pass. Believe in the impossible. We serve, you don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God, prophet Sophia. Believe that this Friday is going to be awesome. Believe that your children will not be vagabond, they will not be prisoners. Believe when you believe you will come. I believe when I was in that village that one day I'll be a master prophet of God. I believe. Nobody believed for me. Nobody believed for me. The Bible says, listen to me, people of God, the book of Mark, the Bible says, Mark chapter 1, Daryl, the Bible says, and when the Lord God, he came back from there, when they crucified him, Matthew chapter 27, 28, the Bible said they killed and crucified him. And when they crucified the book of Mark chapter, Mark chapter 1 says that, and he re, he revealed himself to Mary Madeline. Mary Madeline. Who is Mary Madeline? Mary Madeline was an unrighteous woman, but the Lord did not reveal himself to righteous people. He revealed himself to unrighteous people. So don't condemn yourself. Grace is not for righteous people. Grace is not for righteous people. Jesus did not come for unrighteous people. He came for sinners like you. He came for sinners like me. He came for sinners like you and I. So believe that in him we live and have our being. Believe that in him we have our longevity. Believe that in him we have our shelter, our protection. Believe that when when we are in him we will live long believe that when we are in him no devil can stop us we believe that when we are in him nothing can condemn us the world will condemn you men will condemn you because they know about your past but I thank God they don't know about your future Ladies and gentlemen, how do I become overcome satanic limitation? Believe. Believe that you are a champion. Believe that you are a lion. Believe that there is a lioness anointing in you. There is a lion anointing upon your life. Believe. 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 I believe that my ministry will be upon one of the days I was coming from Israel and in the plane the Lord told me that my ministry will be all over on the, on the continent, on the earth. At that time, there was no sign. At that time, there was no sign. At that time, we were in the hotel building. But I believe the word of God. And today, by the message of God, we are in our own auditorium. And I still believe that that is the beginning of greater things to come. If you believe, if you believe, so if you believe that this sickness that kill all the family people, I believe that I am immune by the blood of Jesus. I believe that I'm set apart by the power of the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 7, it said a thousand shall fall, a ten thousand shall fall, but it shall not come near us. It's only our reward, it's only the reward shall we see. If you believe the word. I have believed the word. I believe the word. When I got, uh, when I was coming, I had a lot of promises here and there. But I don't trust the promises of men because I know that men will fill me. But I believe in God. The Bible says that in the gift of man shall open door for him. Proverbs chapter eighteen. So I believe the gift on me. I believe the gift in me. I know it's an open door for me. I thank God for whoever want to help me. I bless God for whoever want open door for me. But I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God over the word of every man. Child of God, I've come here to encourage you. Believe God that it's possible. Believe God that two years from now you might be in America, you'll be in Asia. Believe God that your dreams will not die. Believe God that your dreams will not shatter. Believe God that your aspiration will not be shattered. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pressing on. Keep on believing. The Bible says in the account of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, and Abraham believed, the fathers of faith believed, and the Bible says it was accounted unto them as righteousness. I want you to believe, Sister Gifty, Sister Patrick, Brother Patrick, wherever you are, believe. So when you believe, you will overcome it. Proverbs 18 verse 16, a gift, a gift, a gift open the way and also the gift uh, bless you. So I trust and believe that all things are possible. Like I, I, like I always said, don't stop believing. God say God bless you. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. So like I said, you believe, you believe, believe that I'll give it. Believe that my children will not die. Believe. How do I overcome satanic limitations? Believe. Believe that I will not be a victim of the wicked household wickedness. I will not become a victim of household wickedness. I believe that I'm a different prophet among the Ghanaian prophets. 
I believe that as the Zimbabwean prophet have taken all over the world, they build jam and they are doing well, filling stadiums. I believe that in the fullness of time, God would push me to that realm. I believe that my ministry, my prophetic grace, my sermon will touch every continent of the world. I believe. I believe, I believe whilst I was young that I'll make it among my mother's children. And I still believe, I believe among the men and women on earth that I am different and God is with me. I believe. So when you believe, you overcome. Believe that the ministry will do well. Believe that the church will do well. After COVID, churches are in crisis. But believe that you will do well. Timothy 4 verse 10. That is why we labor and strive, because, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe the Lord will save you. Is it that you want a baby? Believe that God is going to give it to you. Is it that you will believe in God for healing? In my ministry, the HIV AIDS have been killed. In my ministry, cancer, tumor has been killed. Believe. So I'm going to the last point. How do I overcome satanic limitation? Believe, 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 believe. You are a believer. I don't listen to me. When all men are cast down, the Bible says we shall say that there is a lifting up. Child of God, man of God, don't die before your time. Believe that God will restore you again. The Bible says in Joel 2.25, it said, Ask 16 verse 10 to they reply, Believe in the Lord Jesus or you will be saved. You and your household. If only you can be saved. Uh, I thank God for your life. God bless you. Romans chapter 10, minister Elijah. Elijah said, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah, I want you to believe. It is all about belief. I believe that my ministry is, is one of the best ministry that is touching life, saving souls and helping humanity. I believe Daniel 11 verse 32 be, but the people do, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. So it is all I believe. I'm happy that the second point has been made and, and it has sunk very well. Believe. I thank God for what men are saying about you. Believe that God is what is God. What is God saying? What is God's opinion? What is God's opinion? What is God's opinion? I thank God for the opinion of our accusers. I thank God for the opinion of our 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 our, our enemies. I thank God for the opinion. But what is God's opinion? Let me tell you briefly in the next one minute. God's opinion about you. God's opinion about you is that you are the blessed of him. God's opinion about him is that he will restore you back. God's opinion about you is that you are above and not beneath. God's opinion about you is that you are soaring above and it can never go down. God's opinion about you is that your mistake, your perfect, your sins, your weakness have been covered. God's opinion about you is that by his well, by his stripe, you were healed. God's opinion about you is that he will keep you and he will defend you. God's opinion about you is that open your mind why in some eight uh, he will fill it for you god's opinion about you revelation 3 verse 8 he said i the lord i know you with your little might and your strength you have kept my name so i the lord have opened a door ahead of you there is a bigger door ahead of you and it is a better door and not a bitter door there is a better door that is the opinion of for those who believe god i want you to that day when the man of god rose at apostle paul he said my brothers and sisters uh, this is the jesus christ that was crucified by the romans uh, and giving to the soldier to crucify but today i present him to you unto he anybody that believe in him he shall be saved and unto those who believe in him who are sick they shall be sick they will be healed and unto the poor that believe in him the gospel shall be preached to them and unto those that are depressed and are that they that are they that are demon possessed they shall be liberated and set free this morning what do you believe? I want you to believe. Believe that your mother's family cannot kick you down. Believe that your background, believe that your background cannot put you on the ground. You love your wife, you love your family. God bless you so much. So you believe. Righteousness exalts a nation. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34. Righteousness exalts it by sin is a ripple. So that is it. So the second point is that you believe. Listen to me, beloved one, dearest you. I am from a very poor family. My mother sells cassava. My mother sells salt. My mother sells tomatoes. In one of the lowest village in Accra, one of the lowest village in Ghana, 
believe that you were a winner. Now listen to me. In the village where there was no light, I believe that one day I'll come to Europe and I came to Europe by the grace of God. I believe that one day I'll come to UK and I came to UK. I believe that one day I'll make it to America and right now I am in New York. I believe that one day I'll be in the White House. I believe that one day CNN will come and interview me. Al Jazeera will come and pick my thing. I believe what you believe, you overcome limitation. Limitation will limit you, those who are not confident, those who are not confident, those who are not bold, those who don't have the zeal, those who are not aggressive, limitation will limit them. I want you to be bold because your boldness is the spirit of righteousness. I've told you that when you come into the kingdom of God, you are a liar, you are a lioness, and you are untouchable, you are untearable, you are untouchable, you are undestroyable. No power that is functioning against you work as that chapter 54 says that i made the ghostman i made the instrument of the ghostman but no power believe that it cannot be stagnated forever listen to me they can delay you but they cannot deny you because your life is in the hands of god your future is in the hands of god where you are going is in the hands of god so when you believe you overcome when you believe media god bless you jeremiah 29 verse 11 for i know the plans i have for you declare the law plans to prosper and to not to harm you plans to give you hope and everlasting life god bless you i want you to be bold be bold that you will not die you were born naked you were born naked but you were not born empty god bless you so i want you to believe the last point the last one how do i overcome satanic limitation how do I overcome satanic limitation? Seek for knowledge. Seek for information. Seek for knowledge. Seek for information. One of the devices the devil uses again the body of Christ to limit us is ignorance. It's ignorance. I want you, in the name of Jesus, I want you to give yourself to information. I want you to give yourself to the reading of the word of God. So listen to the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is saved. God bless you. I believe you will do well. So watch me. The third and the last one, how to overcome satanic limitation is that number one, give yourself to information and knowledge. Give yourself to information and knowledge. Give yourself to information and knowledge. The last point, how do I overcome satanic limitation? Number one, give yourself to information. Give yourself to give yourself to information. Give yourself to the reading of the word of God. Joshua chapter one. The Bible said, and the Lord commanded Joshua, and he told him that so far as you read this word, so far as you meditate on this word, so far as you keep this word, listen to me, child of God, listen to me. How do I overcome satanic limitation? Those who are not educated, those who, if you are not informed, you'll be deformed. If you are not informed, your destiny will be koshoko. If you are not informed, your destiny will be dysfunctional. Man of God, if you are not informed, ministry will not do what? Three things make ministry. The anointing of God, information, and knowledge. And the last one is money. If you like these three things, you cannot do well as a man of God. If, as a child of God, one thing that is critical and cardinal and prudent and expedient and noble is that you subject yourself to the reading of the word of God. You subject yourself to the reading of the word of God and buy and fall for the word of God. Don't fall for the fake news. Don't fall for the fake news in the world. Don't fall for the fake news in the world. Don't fall for negativity. So you got to be informed. If you are not informed, you'll be deformed. Yes, I want to be a prophet. What do you know about the prophetic? My ministry is prophetic ministry. What do you know about it? My ministry is apostolic ministry. What do you know about it? Evangelical. What do you know about pastoral? What do you know about it? I want you to everything you do, get understanding, get wisdom, get knowledge. The Bible says that, Listen to me. The, the, Daniel said that the people that know what they are God, underline if that scripture is your the people Hebrew four verse thirteen. For the word of God is alive and at, at it, and alive and alive, alive and at it, sharper than any double sword. Be be feed yourself with the word. Feed be knowledgeable. Every discipline you find yourself be educated about it. Call men and women who are on top on respect to knowledge. And sometimes I call. I call my IT people and I tell them to educate me about IT. I, I don't know, I'm a prophet, yes, but that is not my field. My field is the prophetism. When you get yourself informed, you'll be better. The reason why you are still aware you are, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, wisdom the principle to therefore get wisdom with other and God bless you. The reason why you are still lacking in life is because 
Josh, Joshua, keep this book of the Lord. God bless Joshua 1 verse 8. Listen to me. Knowledge is power. And power is power. So, child of God, you got to seek for knowledge. When you got knowledge, you overcome. When you get knowledge, the difference between the developed world and Africa, especially West Africa, is because, and when I'm talking, I understand because I've gone to nations of the world and the different culture, the different experiences, I preach with it. The difference between America and West Africa is because majority of the people are knowledgeable. They are knowledgeable in the right perspective. They are knowledgeable when it comes to the Ghanaian media platform. This is insulting that. That is insulting that. That is fighting that. That is negative knowledge. That is negative energy. You don't need that. So the last one I'm establishing to overcoming satanic limitation. Your what you don't know, you become a slave of it. What you don't know, you become a bond servant of that. I want you to subject yourself. When was the last time you even read about current affairs? When was the last time you even listened to good news? It's not those loud news. When was the last time you have to listen to news so as you know what time is it? You have to read current affairs so as you know what time is it. When the last time you, you bought a newspaper, you got to know what time is it. You got to know. You got to know what is even the exchange rate. You don't know the exchange rate. You want to spend dollar. You want God to give you dollar and pounds. But as of today, do you know the exchange rate? What you know, you become. What you know, you become. What you familiarize yourself with. If you want to spend more dollar, have dollar around you. Think about dollar. Know more about dollar. Yesterday, when I came, I asked somebody, please, can you educate me about stock markets? Can you educate? Yes, I'm a prophet, but I don't know much about stock market. I am not an economic student. Then a person called me. It's a prophet. Because when I was coming, I saw I saw stock markets. And 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 I was asking myself, what is the stock markets? And I saw it going, coming, going, coming. And I said, Can you educate me about stock markets? And the person has educated me that if you even put about two thousand, one thousand dollars at the stock market, it, it gives back. So now that is why I'm talking to you because somebody has told me, somebody has been educated about stock markets. Listen to me. Some of you are even married. You are not educated about marriage. You are not informed about marriage. You have no information, extra information about marriage. All that you have is your womanhood and your breast and your manhood. And that is it. No, sir. You got to know contemporary times of how to marry and blah, 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 like that. So I'm ending here by telling you, child of God, that you have to seek for knowledge. God can be with you. But if you are not knowledgeable, you'll be a foolish believer. You'll be an unwise believer. It's because your mental fricatives are weak and you don't want to subject yourself to good knowledge. This morning, this afternoon, seek for knowledge. I look at these young guys who are coming after us and, and, and I ask myself, that who are they following? Because we follow somebody for knowledge. We follow. We follow. We, I am sitting here. I'm following someone. And I follow him assiduously. But this generation, they don't follow anybody. So they will not know anything. They will not know anything. Knowledge is power and it gives us wisdom. A politician, how knowledgeable are you? I was asking myself, I asked the Uber driver that brought me from Newark to, to New York, that, uh, please, our politicians, when they come to America, are you sure that this is the same place they come or there's a different America? Because if it's the same America they come and how they are running Ghana and the other African nations, especially the Western African nations, God will deal with them. Because they have done great disservice to us, the citizens. This is water. 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 It's because somebody is knowledgeable. Look at the package alone. This is water. If you are selling, get knowledge. If you're a media practitioner, get knowledge. If you're a church administrator, get knowledge. If you're a resident pastor, get knowledge. If you're associate pastor, get knowledge. If you're a head pastor, get knowledge. If you're a general church member, get knowledge. Don't be limited. The greatest strength, according to studies, is your mind. Stretch your mind. Open your mind. Don't be common. Don't settle to be common. Get knowledge. If you're a mother, if you're a father, let your children go to the best schools. Give them good education. Give them good education. Knowledge. Knowledge is power and power is power. When you're knowledgeable, you will be a step ahead of your contemporaries 
acquaintance and associates. Child of God, seek for knowledge. Read Isaiah 11 verse 12. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel of mind. The Spirit of the knowledge. The Spirit of the knowledge. Sometimes there's this young man that I called him Proverbs 4 verse 7. The beginning of wisdom is God bless you. I'll bring upon God bless. There's this. Let me put it this way. See, if you don't have knowledge as a man of God, you will be making mistakes and time will catch up with you. When I began ministry, I didn't know certain things. I was attacking people, attacking. Listen to me. Everybody had his assignments. Pastor Benny, his assignment is different from assignment. Prophet Opokunsi, our father in the Lord, his assignment is different from assignment. Maybe his assignment, because his assignment is not like my assignment, I might see something I'm doing and it's not doing and I'll attack it. No, you're making wrong. There's a young guy who is preaching now and he's attacking everybody. Follow your assignments. Be knowledgeable and, and follow your assignments. Leave everybody. The Bible said to everybody an assignment given. Wisdom is a principal key. Wisdom is a principal key. So focus on and get wisdom, get knowledge. The Bible says that his garments shall be on the shoulder. And it's an increase in wisdom and knowledge, Isaiah. He said, His garment, he said, unto us is a prince born. He said, his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. And it's an increase in knowledge. Sister, you are dumb. Some of you, you don't want to be receptive when they advise you. When you see wisdom, you run away from wisdom. That is why you love it what it is. At your age of 45, any man that comes your way, oh, I want to marry you. So I'm going to talk to my pastor about it. 45, you want to be married and somebody has come. You are going to pray about it. You are, you are a joke. Knowledge must tell you that give the man the opportunity. Just check the medicals. Make, make sure the two of you are going to the hospital to do your medicals and there's no problem. There's no viral problem. Start something. Give yourself an opportunity. Some of you, you have stagnated and limited yourself out of ignorance. I know a certain, I know somebody. The, the person is boxed with antiquated, antiquated, antiquated behavior. Medieval behavior. She doesn't want to come in terms with modern, modern knowledge. Modern knowledge. Man of God, if you're even running your church like the church of 1979, you, people will not come. Some men of God, they are still preaching about Samson and Delilah. Nobody's interested in Samson and Delilah. We are in 21st century. When I came here, Tesla, there is a car called Tesla. Everybody's driving Tesla in America. It has no fuel. So if you are still there and you not upgrade yourself, where God is taking it to, then the now version of you cannot accommodate it. Do you need a higher version of yourself? That my sons and daughters listen to me. My handlers listen to me. Where God is taking us to, the visions I have, the now version of us cannot take us there. Let's upgrade ourselves. Upgrade. Seek for knowledge. You will not die by knowing more. You will not die by asking to be educated. You will not die by asking to be briefed. The president of Ghana every morning must be brief, must be educated, must be informed. I dealt with, by the grace of God upon my life, I'm open to, to some of this thing because I have encounters with them. Every president will be brief the day, uh, on, uh, if it's today, the president of Ghana will be brief, the CDS will brief him, the police head will brief him, all of them will brief him about the security situation, the economic management, they brief him. You, you, the brief you have is 1982 brief. You are not educating yourself. You are not reading anything on, online. When you come on Facebook, the people are frightened. The people are frightened. This woman is frightened. That woman is frightened. They call you bill. They are the people you waste your data on. Learn steady, steady, child of God, steady. Breathe, breathe yourself. Don't be paranoid. Don't be myopic. Open yourself to knowledge. 
Proverbs 18, verse 15. The heart of the descendant acquires knowledge. For the ears of the wise take it out. God bless you. Knowledge will let you step forward. <laughs> Not, what you don't know of, you become a slave of it. Seek knowledge if you're a musician. Seek knowledge on your faculty, on your discipline. If you're a church administrator, don't be 1984, 1966 church administrator. Address yourself. Go on the internet. Modern church, trending church, first class church. Learn. Go on the internet and learn. Don't sit down. Learn. I learn. Every day I learn. I learn. God bless you. The Lord show you mercy, great revelation. Yes, my name, God bless you. Refuse to be damp. Some men of God are damp. Their messages are damp. The fact that you are reciting the Bible does not mean that you are preaching the gospel. The gospel must reform people. Some people hear the word of God and it's, this, it's monotonous. Every day prayer, every day prayer, every day prayer. What is that? Listen to me. If you're a man of God, especially if you're a young man of God, your times will not be like our time. Right now, a time is coming that when people come to church, they will not bring the Bible. They will just come with their phone. Anything you say, somebody has preached it before and they will compare. I am telling you, when it comes to America, at almost every... Listen to me, people. If you are still joking, know that, that what, the world is not waiting for you. We are seeing channel. Wake up and say for knowledge. If you're a married woman, if you're a married man, what does my wife want? What does my life, my wife? No, say knowledge. Your sons and daughters, when they come back from school, listen to me. Yes, I'm a, the gospel must reform people. Some people, they will, no, 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 sir. No, sir. Especially the prophetic church. We are losing members because we don't preach big message. We don't preach big message. What does Pastor Otabel and the rest they preach? Balanced message. And we want our churches to be like their church. Bishop T.D. Bixman, like their churches. Knowledge. I'm ending here. Knowledge. The young guys. Don't follow rubbish. Because I pity you people and your generation. Because your generation is going to be more complex than my generation. This is the time, young man, who still have time on his hands, steady to show yourself approved. Read the Bible, and after that, read extra biblical accounts. Time is, this is a timely message for me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Daniel. Yes, read. Read. Be knowledgeable. The questions my son asks me, I go like, is it is it 10 years? There's somebody online right now. He caught the husband cheating because his five-year-old son, listen to me, his five-year-old son told the mother that I think that our house of, and mention the house of name, is dating daddy. Listen, the five-year-old son no dating, dating. So if you are there and you still think that these young boys and young girls are not knowledgeable, they will come and they will, you, they will come and hire you. For I, I had a shock of my life. When I saw Madeline told me, listen to me, people of God, the little children who are coming, the type of thing they are being taught in school, they ate it deep. So if you don't educate yourself, and you see, if you are not valuable, you cannot be sellable. Why are you online? You're online on my page because I am adding something. And that is knowledge. If you are not valuable as a believer, being a believer is not enough. You have to be a valuable commodity. You have to be valuable. How do you become valuable? You become valuable as a result of knowledge. How much more of the word of God do you have in you? How much, if you, are, if you study economics, are you on top? If you study linguistics, are you on top? Your morphology, your morphology, of your phonology, your syntax. Are you on top? Your concord. Are you on top? Your, your language structure, your word structure. Are you on top? If you study botany, are you on top? If you're a media practitioner, you study PR, are you on top? 
The PR you said in 19, 2000 years ago, the year 2000 PR, you have to still upgrade. When you upgrade yourself, limitation leaves you. You overcome limitation when you upgrade yourself. Some of you married women, even the panties you are wearing, you got to upgrade it. Your bedroom garments, you know, I'm the only person who will tell you. Your bedroom garments, you see, they are better laundries, new modern laundry, spice it. You are still wearing, you put towel around you, dirty towel around you, and your husband will leave and go and cheat. Upgrade. Upgrade. You are too damp. You are too damp. Your mind is damp. That's what it's after prayers. You have to say for wisdom, knowledge. Some of you are not smart. Some of you are not smart. Some of you are not knowledgeable. You don't take risk. You are not smart. Listen to me. Prayers are not enough. Righteousness are not enough. I'm a righteous man. I live a righteous life. It's not enough. Some of you, eh, your mind is too rigid. You are too rigid. That is why you are still in Ghana. If you were to open up a bit, you wouldn't have been aware you are. You are too rigid. That is why you are still single. You are too rigid. That is why you are sick. You are too rigid. You are too rigid. You are you are just simply rigid. You are. You see, we have two types of constitution: rigid constitution and flexible constitution. And according to framers of destiny and good market structure, they tell us that the flexible constitution does well than the rigid. If you are a rigid believer, Jesus will come. Rata will come. You will still not enjoy from it. Listen to me. I've come your way to teach you how to overcome satanic limitation. Number one, be righteous. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Number two, believe. That is number two. Number three, seek for knowledge. If you are rewrite to write, rewrite it. Listen to me. There's a guy I know in America here. He's a nurse. He came to me. He's a nurse. And after the nursing work, he will rest for two hours. Go and do Uber. Uber. And then he said, Prophet, I'm picking up IT court because I've seen that now IT is the way to go. I, 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 and I said, why? He said, that is, that is what it is. Oh, yet now, now maintain your answer. See me, you see, the Bible says that we are people that are trusted. I'm a trusted prophet. Because I'm not a prophet that is at one place. I'm very exposed man of God. And I've met people. I've met languages. I've met civilizations. And I'm a spiritual man. Sister, if you are still damp, nobody will marry you. If you are still medieval in behavior, in thinking, the anointing will not work. You have to pick up a course, pick up that course. But God is not going to bless you without know you working. I keep saying that. The, the, the legal way of God blessing you is that you are working. A miracle can happen. That is a miracle. But the legal root of God blessing his people is that when you are working. So he told the Israelites that why would the people whom God loved so much in, in Egypt, why would God tell them that they should go and work? God, that God has a, that this system, this worldly system has a, the way it works and it's not going to change because of you. It's not, some of you in Africa, you like itty bitty and humor, but it's not going to change because of you. Work. Sister, get, peel yourself down and get something to do. Pick up a job. When I came to America, people are doing Uber. Old men are doing Uber. Old men are doing door to door. A, guy, a man brought me cappuccino. An old man, I, 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 no, I, I felt sorry. You're a young man there messing up. And you, you're a joke. Nobody, no, nobody has your time, sister. Nobody has your time. Nobody has your time. The people you see them doing well, they are doing what I am teaching you. Listen to me. If you follow these teachings, your life will be reformed. Your life will be better. Don't follow people who are not going anywhere. We have some people, they are not going anywhere. They are not going anywhere. 
It's just a matter of time. They'll crash. They, we have some people, no solid foundation. Though it's just a matter of time. It's a, they are, but to the benefit of the, of, of the weather. Let's learn from the British. Let's learn from the Americans. They are running the economy 24 hours. Why do you run your private business 24 hours? But the public sector, which holds the book, you don't run it 24 hours. That is this. That is disingenuous. People have told you, if you pick it to help, if you don't pick it, it's your life. You see, to, I'm, I'm excited about it. I see a lot of young men on, online. Let me tell you in one minute. Listen to me. If you're a young man and you are, uh, you are sleeping, yeah, when was it? I think two days ago, I called, our pastors, I called some of them around 2, 1. They were, some of them were sleeping. Some picked the call. And this time, I'm going to call you my pastor. If you're my pastor, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you at dawn to see whether you are learning at dawn or you are praying at dawn. You keep on sleeping. I keep telling all of you, as a prophet, I'm, we are like wind. You see us today, tomorrow, you see us at a different place. Listen to me, people of God. You have slept for far too long. The limitation can be broken by some of these three points I've been inspired to teach you. Listen to me, child of God. Some of you have no business at where you are. Let your energy count. Let your time count. Be productive minded. Be fruitful minded. Be money conscious. Be money minded. That what I'm doing is it going to give me money? Is it going to be? Is it, is it going to be? Is it going to be beneficial? And it is all about knowledge. So I'm done. If you pick it, God is going to bless you. If you don't pick it, too, the options are yours. I am praying that you not be a borrower. You be a lender. I am praying that your children will not serve other people's children. Your children will be independent and assertive. Young man, do something with your life. People have got, I don't care. Your children will serve other people's children. And that is not a portion of the righteous. So I appreciate you. If you take it, God will distinguish you. If you don't take it, I'll still be your prophet. I'll still lead you. One day the Spirit of God will help you.